Welcome to the Wizards of Ecom, your no-fluff playbook for online success. Each episode is fully packed with actionable tactics you can implement in your business right now. Take your life to a higher level and excel in your online success. It's time to work on you and your business. Let's do this. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Wizards of Ecom. My name is Navy, and I'll be your host. Today, we have none other than the founder and CEO of Chat Marketing University, a brilliant digital marketer, chatbot genius, and influencer marketing expert, plus seven-figure seller, Paul Barron. Paul, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I think Thank it was, so uh, I did a call with you guys back, is it February? Mm -hmm. I don't know, earlier this year. I don't know when it was earlier, but it was, it was fun. So it's good to be on the podcast. That's the exact reason why I'm having you on the podcast, because it was amazing info that you shared, but you shared to our advanced group. Right. And I thought, why not share this with the everyone, you know, yeah. <laughs> so everyone actually up their game and can learn about what or how to deal with nano influencers and how to build a strong community of influencers. And yeah, today's topic, this is what it's going to be about. I like to chat about what many of the answers are, how to reach out, how to, I don't know, communicate with them and how to actually build up a community of nano influencers. So yeah. um, what are nano influencers first off? Yeah, so nano influencers uh, would be defined technically as, well, it depends on where you read the blog, but as I define them, um, looking at specifically Instagram, anyone on Instagram with less than 10,000 followers basically. Um, now, if you look at other platforms, um, you know, uh, say YouTube or TikTok or Clubhouse, or I mean, even Facebook, I wouldn't really, Facebook is hard for influencer marketing, but um, there's varying levels. So like TikTok is a little bit higher bar, but uh, the point is, is that generally they're people that have not really done a lot of partnership, brand partnerships yet. Maybe they're just getting started. And that's one reason why I like working with them is because they, they're, they're new to the world of influencer marketing. And so the audiences, their, their, their fans, their friends, their family that follow them are not like burnt out. They don't have like ad fatigue, essentially. I love it. I love it. And uh, you were mentioning like different platforms. Is there a different of reaching out to each influencer like you were mentioning tiktok and instagram and facebook not so much but these two the tiktok and instagram uh what's the number usually you were mentioning ten thousand or yeah generally I, I look for people less than with less than ten thousand on instagram on on tiktok you can get up to like 50 100 i mean there there's the, it really tiktok is still establishing itself as a as a sort of channel for influencers and the way that TikTok works is it's so it's so interesting that oftentimes people will get TikTok famous. They have like one video that goes crazy, and um, depending on how they follow that up, their their accounts may continue to grow, or maybe they just had one hit and then they gain like thirty thousand followers overnight. Like it's insane how that happens. So because of that, you can you can partner with people on on TikTok on TikTok that have more followers than Instagram. And typically you can do this for, you know, more, more affordably. So um, the rates that you can kind of look at, you know, paying to partner with influencers. And now what I, what I say by rates is you want to think of it in terms of like free product plus possibly paying. So one of the reasons why I love working with nano influencers is because most of the time you can work with them for just the cost of a free product. And that's good enough. And that's a great way to start, just start building a relationship. You know, oftentimes one of the things that I, I, I feel like, you know, people dabble in influencer marketing where they can kind of um, make a few mistakes is they just look at it like, I just want to get one post. And they don't look at like how you can actually build a relationship with that person so that instead of just getting one post, you're getting posts all the time, you know, every week or, you know, multiple times per week. And that's one thing that we've done really, really well at BB Littles, my, my main brand that we've, we've cultivated a community where, you know, we have incredible mommies that work with us. And when we need photos of a specific style or of a specific product or something, we just say, Hey, we need photos or videos or something like this. And then, you know, within a few days we have, you know, dozens to choose from. I love it. And I think it's brilliant that you were saying building the relationship. I think also like, what I see from my end is like 
each time when I am the person who's trying to reach out is for one thing only, or mm. anyone who's reaching out to me is like one, one, one post, one shout out, one story, one whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's super important that you merge relationship. How would you build up that relationship? I mean, just like you do any relationship, really. I mean, you just be a friend, be friendly. <laughs> it's it's not rocket. It's not rocket science. It's, I mean, uh, I'll give you a real world example. I mean, Ashley, one of the one of the influencers that we work with, her name is Ashley, and she and her family just went to Anna Maria Island in Florida, and I'm friends with her on Facebook. You know, we got connected through our business four years ago. Um, well, shoot, five years ago now. And, um, it started off as a, you know, she, we gave her some free products in exchange for photos. And, um, we've just gotten to know her more and more over the years. In fact, normally every year we take a road trip. We haven't in the past two years, but for the past four years, we've taken a road trip to, to visit family in Grand Rapids. I'm in Colorado, Grand Rapids, Michigan. So we drive through kind of America's heartland. And one of the things that we started doing a few years ago is we just tell our brand reps, um, is what we called them at the time. Um, now they're we changed it. We're their brand ambassadors, but um, we just do a post in our Facebook group where they all hang out say, Hey, we're going on this road trip. If you're anywhere along the way, we'd love to meet you. And so um, like Ashley, we've met in person and hung out with her, gotten to know her kids. And so it's, it, it's cool because you, you, you really, it's, we just picked up a friend and it just so happens that the, the, the start of this relationship was, it was more like, you know, businessy, you know, like it was our business and she was working with our business and she still does. But because of the friendship that we built with her over the last five years, now it's like my wife texts her all the time. And she's one of those people that if we just need anything like, Hey, Ashley, we really need more photos of the, you know, the, the shark rash garden or something. And she'll get on it like within a week or two, or if she can't, she'll be like, Hey, I'm really busy this week. I can't, why don't you ask Hannah or something? But that, that's my point is you build a relationship. It's not something, this is something, this is traditional marketing. This is real business building. It's not, it's not the Amazon get rich quick hack scheme. Let's see what we can do to, to cheat our way to the top of the listing, right? This is building a real community of your customers, treating them with respect because you should always treat everyone with respect. doesn't matter who you are. Always be respectful. There you go. There's your business advice. <laughs> but just, you know, treat them with respect. And it's amazing how, how, how far that goes. And um, like over the weekend, my wife said she saw a customer post something like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so glad like a comment in like a comment thread, like, commenting to one of her friends something like oh it's so cool that you have these now we got them way before they were a thing like then this is like fans of ours we don't know these people on social but they're saying that apparently we're a thing and well the only reason why we're a thing is because of our team and because we spent time just being friendly being nice just be nice <laughs> be kind i love it it's just like, be nice be kind be respectful there you go your business place <laughs> <laughs> there True. you go True, but that, that, that's that's the truth. So, building relationships. First off, how would you reach out? Basically, what yeah. kind of format? Is it short? Is it long intro? Like, how does it look like? Yeah. So this is really cool. I just they um I've been for the past uh, month, and for actually all of June, I, I run um I run rooms in Clubhouse, and I'm I'm doing a series on influencers now. And last week, I had a panel with influencers. Uh, the week, two weeks prior, it was with brand owners that work with influencers. And then in on the 30th, it's going to be a conversation between influencers and the brand owners all together. But this is directly from the influencers last week. I have it recorded. Um, you can listen to it also. But basically, one of the things that you want to do is you want to send an email. And if you're going to be messaging, have it message from your brand account on Instagram. Okay. So let's say I'm gonna just going to talk about Instagram in general. So first things first. When you are partnering with anyone, um, when you're when you're when you're when you're asking anyone to do something for you, okay, you need to think about it from the perspective of the influencer themselves, and you need to think: Is this my ask going to help them more than it helps me? That's that's question one you need to ask yourself, because people are not, generally speaking, going to go out of their way and help strangers just because they're nice people, right? Especially if uh, you're starting to reach out to influencers 
that have bigger followings. They get, they get emails like this all the time. They get bombarded with requests. And so you need to start by thinking through um, how can you formulate an offer that is better for them than it is for you. So that's step one. So let's say, for example, you reach out to somebody that has 500 followers, they take great photos. So I'm just gonna say from my experience, like with, with our brand, I would look for people that would be posting about babies, about family time, about outdoor play, those sorts of things. And so I would, I would um, do a search. One of the ways that you can do this is you can go to Google and you can just type in like Instagram.com. Is this video recorded or is it just? Yeah, it is recorded. Uh, it's also going to be, so first off, it's the podcast is like, um, the audio is going to be recorded on Wednesday and afterwards on Friday, the video as well. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen and then oh, I'll sure. walk through for the people that are listening on audio. That's brilliant. Um, That's if you need to enable screen sharing. Yeah. Does it work now? Yep. Awesome. Okay. So I will, I will, I will walk through, I'll speak through what I'm doing for the people that are not listening on a video. So what I'm going to do is there's an, as an operator. So I do like site colon Instagram.com. And then I would use the minus. So I'd use the minus sign minus explore. So site colon, no spaces, Instagram.com. Then I do a space, the minus symbol explore, and then whatever hashtag I'm searching for or description or whatever. So in this case, the example that I'm going to give is baby spam because new mommies, when they take, when they, when they have babies, you know, they, a lot of times they, you know, it's baby spam, their entire account is just, then it becomes the baby's. Instagram account. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then this, what this does, the minus explore, what that, let me explain what that does is that it says, it tells Google, look on Instagram for the, for the term hashtag baby spam, but don't show me the explore page. So that's minus explore. So what this does is this has a whole bunch of um, links that then I can just, I'm using a, um, uh, a Macintosh. So if I hold down command, it'll open it up in a new window and so i've got like alexandra michelle Gaines, nikki thomas davies um what i'm what i'm first going to do is i'm going to look at the account so this one was lamaz play uk so it looks like it's a business account they have four thousand followers um they're a business account so it's not a good fit and then this other one is rachel riley rr she has five hundred and five thousand followers so i would not reach out to her because she is way too many Mm -hmm. um, she would be definitely be needing money up front. Um, then there's another one that has 253. It looks like it was like a wedding recently. There's a bunch of photos of a little baby. Let's see when the last one was 206 weeks ago. Um, would you reach what's the less time that they should have like posted? Yeah. To so it doesn't look like he's too active. This is 139 weeks was his most recent one. So I probably wouldn't reach out to him because it was 139 weeks ago. Um, so I'm going to keep opening some. So let's see, Kelly Elizabeth. It's a cute baby. So 587. Um, looks like she just posted something on Father's Day. And look, there's a kid swimming in a pool. It was perfect. So if this was for my brand... I would definitely reach out. I would reach out to her. So let's see. She says owner at the pink lion bookstore. So she's also a business owner. So she, so she probably understands a little bit of influencer marketing type stuff. So I would probably reach out to her. So mm -hmm. the process that I would do in this, if I was actually reaching out, um, there's a handful of things that I would do first. I would see if there's a, if there's an email in her bio, if there was an email, then I would actually email her directly. And um, again, directly from influencers, if you're going to be emailing people, have an actual email account at your domain. Like if your brand is, you know, siliconspatula.com, you should have, you know, Paul Barron or Paul at siliconspatula.com, right? Don't send like, you know, super juicy fatty one at gmail.com or whatever your, your high school email is. <laughs> Like don't send, don't send from a Gmail account, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter if, if, if you are in business, 
treat your business like a business and get a real freaking email account. It's not that hard. And that's like expensive. Yeah. Like it's five dollars a month on Google. Yep. Anyone can do it. Like I could probably teach my grandma how to do it. It's super simple. So it's amazing to me how many Amazon sellers I see that don't actually have an email. Like even on their inserts, it's like John 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 B five twenty one at gmail.com or something. That is so not professional. So so that's the st- um, second or third step, rather. So you've you you're you're thinking through your offer. What's your offer, right? How is it going to be great for for uh, Kelly Elizabeth? Okay, so I've got my offer. I'm doing the search. That's step two. Identify that she might be a good person. Um, if she had an email in her address, I would email her with my offer, saying you know something along the lines of, "Hey Kelly, you know found you on Instagram. You know your your kids look adorable." Um, whatever you want to put something personal, personal in there. Like, I love your aesthetic, blah, 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 blah. You know, we'd love to partner with you in this. And then you put your offer in there. Right. So we like to give you, you know, $200 worth of free product or whatever it is. Like I always lead with value. Right. So each one of our swim diapers is about $20 on our website. So if I wanted to partner with somebody, I would go with, Hey, we want to give you about a hundred bucks worth of free product from our, from our site. And we just want to, you know, explore possibly partnering with you long term, and just test out a couple, you know, initial posts or something like that. Would that be something you'd be interested in? Mm-hmm. Most of the time, people are going to say yes to us because we built a following ourselves, and so when they they look for us, they'll see the coverage that we've gotten. Um, so she'll get back to us, and then and then we'll just take it from there. That would be the email approach. Now, in uh, this instance, Kelly Elizabeth does not have an email a- address on her account. So then my process would be, I would go through from the business account that I'm going to be direct messaging her on Instagram and follow her personal account. And then I'd start engaging with her, her, her posts. And I would actually, there's a way that you can turn on alerts. I would turn on every alert. So as soon as she posts a new photo, I would want to see it and I would want to comment on it. And the, and the goal is that I want her to notice us noticing her. Okay. I want her to notice that we've noticed her. And I want her to follow us back so that then I can send her a direct message and it gets through to her inbox. Because if I just direct message her, so first and foremost, don't be the creepy weirdo that messages somebody right away after following them saying, oh, you'd be perfect for our account. Send us a direct message at this account or something like that. Don't do that. That is so spammy. Um, The other thing you don't want to do is directly message people immediately after you follow them with some sort of business proposition. You need to warm up that relationship first, right? It's, you know, the same thing is you're not, you're not going to go to a bar and, you know, see someone at the end of the bar, then walk over and ask them if they want to get married just because they've looked at you in the eyes, right? Like, Maybe you do. Let's try out how it works. <laughs> you're skipping, you're skipping a few steps is my point. And a lot of times people will go straight for the sale. They don't even warm up and like, Hey, let's, talk first. So Mm -hmm. what I would do is I'd follow her. I'd start interacting with some of her posts. I'd give it a couple days, you know, wait till she follows us back. And then I would start a conversation and I'd send her a direct message probably as a story reply first, you know, look at her story. Most people are posting stories all the time. And then once she replies, then I would slip in that, you know, the, the potential partnership thing, if they don't have an email. So that is how you would do manual outreach. Now, there are sites that you can go to like perlu.com, Aspire IQ, there's Thomason, there's Intellifluence. There's all of these sites that I wouldn't necessarily use um, to, to aggregate influencers. And the reason why I, wouldn't, why, why I wouldn't use them for nano influencers specifically is because nano influencers, again, you can generally work with for, for the cost of the product itself. Now, if you're wanting to um, work with bigger influencers, then you're, you're going to have to pay. You are going to consider the fact that, so this one lady that I had found that had 500 and 5,000 followers, something along those lines. If I were to reach out to her, the conversation would be completely different. It would be more around the lines of, I would do a lot more research first and foremost. I would see, okay, is this person's audience squarely in my demographic of, of ideal customers? And I'd look at the, the type of content that she's posting. You know, is she posting a lot of stuff having to do with babies and families and, and pregnancy specifically or post-pregnancy and that sort of thing, because that's our, that's our market. Mm-hmm. Um, now, just because somebody has a baby doesn't mean that they're in our demographic. I mean, the, the influencer could be a beauty influencer and a travel blogger, and they don't post 
yeah, they have a baby, but they don't post about the baby. It's all about beauty and travel and fitness and that. I wouldn't reach out to that person because their audience isn't a fit. So you've got to do your research first, right? So if you're reaching out to a higher tier influencer, you have to understand you're going to pay and just think of it as an ad, as, as ad spend. And you want to work with them and come up with a creative promotion strategy. So um, you asked me about nano influences and then I went, I love it because you always just answer like seven of my questions. So go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I, yeah. So let me kind of wrap up what I was saying about finding influence. I feel like I, I did a good job, like how to find them. Right. No, you did uh, a great job in finding them, by the way, especially yeah. like on Instagram. Because yeah, the, yeah. the other, the other thing you're going to want to know too, is if you are new to Instagram, if you've, if you don't have a following yourself, if you, if, if, if you're, um, again, you're in the camp where you're like, I didn't know that I needed to have a real email address. Um, you know, you get your real email address. If you, if you've never posted anything on your Instagram account, you need to start doing that because even people that have four or 500 followers, right. Let's say a no name person comes up to you and they say, well, we want to see if you like these products for free, you know, to post, they might take them and they might post something. But my point is that you're not going to get bigger people to take notice of you until you start doing stuff yourself. And um, just the same exact thing as the value proposition of thinking through, if I want somebody to help me out, I've got to make it better for them than it is for myself. You got to think about that as for your content too. So you need to think through, how am I going to be posting? What content can I post that will get engagement from my audience that will add value to their daily lives? right? And not just be 55 shots of the product packaging of my nootropic drink or something. It's like, there's one way to talk. So this is a, um, this is a nootropic soda drink that I found. Some it was like Facebook ads. Um, I, if I was advertising this, I wouldn't just be showing the bottle, mm -hmm. right? I would be filling content with things about like natural, uh, you know, energy boosting things or like the ways, like how nootropics work or, 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 or the lifestyle, like people out like hiking and being productive or something along those lines. Right. So you want to post content and season your account so that when you reach out to people that have followings, they're going to, you're going to be coming to them with, you know, a couple hundred, couple thousand, you know, tens of thousands, whatever. Um, and, and the whole point here is that, uh, you know, again, if you want people to promote you, then you're going to have to be professional. You're going to have to have a solid social media account in order for larger people, which would be the goal to want to work with you. Okay. So um, you got to start posting content. Don't, you know, direct message from a blank account. Nobody's zero followers. There's a lot of spam. There's a lot of fake crap going on and people are wary of that. So, you know, you've got to treat your business seriously and invest in content, invest in social media. And then from there, you want to, you know, reach out. So that would be the only other thing that I would add is making sure that if you're not getting really good results um, and you're brand new, um, it could be that, you know, people are looking at your products and they just, um, maybe they just don't want to partner with an unknown, unknown brand. I don't know. It, yeah, it's kind of a case by case basis. But also, that I totally agree with you. Also, when you're looking to someone with a 500 versus a 5,000, it will be 5,000 is not a lot, but it's already something, you know. So it's right. like they will look up to you. Okay, this is someone that I would like to associate with, especially if they are like less, they have less followers. So definitely. Um, okay, so getting back just a bit, what will be the goal or the purpose of? partnering up with this nano influencer? Is it yep. for product review? Is it for content? Is it, what is it for? Yeah, the, the biggest thing, and this is where it's, again, it's, this is real marketing. It's traditional, it's business building, right? This is not, um, this is, yeah, this isn't just like in terms of Amazon speak, like directly translatable always into sales because nano influencers, right? So when you're going to get started, you know, you'll start partnering with people if you're completely unheard of, completely unknown, you're going to start partnering with people that are maybe a couple hundred followers, maybe thousands. And so you got to think, you know, the, the total engaged following that you're reaching is maybe 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. So 
it's not going to be a huge needle mover in terms of sales, generally speaking. Um, now you will see a little bit of boost, a little bump from nano influencers initially with some sales, but it's not going to be like you're working with, a, you know, somebody with millions of followers, right. In terms of that sales increase. So the way that I, the way that I look at it is in multiple value propositions. So there's one thing which is called earned media value. So earned media is a, it's a, it's a public relations term. So if you're building a real business and you're, and you're doing innovative things, you write a press release. Um, if, if let's say, I mean, one method of getting earned media is that you do a press release and then a news agency picks it up and then they do a news story on you because of the press release. So you earn that media. Like you didn't pay for the, the news media to do a story, right? That's earned. Mm -hmm. So earned media, when it comes to social media, is the same thing. So the earned media value, like I had said, I've given you this kind of range of between $10 and then a hundred bucks is that you kind of, kind of expect to pay nano influencers for a single post. So what I look at is the earned media value in getting user generated content. UGC or user generated content is really the holy grail of content. It's, it, it's amazing. You can use it. If you use it in your ads, it helps your ads, your ads, your ads perform better because people don't, that user generated content just it just looks more organic it looks like it's a part of the feed versus like a super well photoshopped thing it you know oftentimes those rough photos do better than the highly polished ones so mm -hmm. what i look for is user generated content i look at buzz like how much are people talking about us on social is that bleeding through into google so i, I set up google alerts and all that sort of stuff as well um, you can use it for reviews we have in the past. The real hard thing with this though, is that you don't want to appear that you have a review group going on, right? So we're very careful that we, we don't ask our reps if they reviewed to it, like, well, once even if they've already reviewed once, we generally don't ask them to review again. Maybe we'll have them review things twice, but even then it's a bit of a challenge because you're not allowed to technically, you know, give anything away for free and require people to leave a review or even not even require, just ask them to. So generally speaking, what I do with our reps is I say, Hey, ladies, you know, we we're launching this product for those, you know, we'll, we'll cherry pick and we'll say, okay, like, you know, we don't need reviews from this, 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 and this person because you've already reviewed, but if you would like to leave a review, we'd love it. We're not requiring that you do um, because you most of the time they're getting it for free. And so I'm very clear, like, you're not required to leave a review. We would love a review. If you would like to purchase it yourself and help us by doing an actual purchase so it's verified, that'd be great. Because we do have some people that do that. Um, so yeah, it does help with reviews. But really what it really, the biggest thing that it helps with is your social media presence and Amazon, they coexist, right? When people are looking for products, Amazon is the bottom of the funnel. They go to Amazon to buy. But- people don't generally buy things in a vacuum. They're not going to just do, they're going to see and then like automatically like buy it. A lot of times what people are going to do is they'll look at one product. They might do some research depending on the price point, um, depending on the demographic too. So I know that our mommies research what they buy for their kids because, you know, new mommies specifically are very, a lot more protective. So it's really important for us to make sure that we have good social media saturations so that when they're doing their research phase, we come up everywhere mm -hmm. because three months down the road, they're not researching any more than they're buying. So that's what it is for us. It's top of mind brand awareness. It's market saturation. If we can be everywhere, you know, like I said, um, somebody over the weekend had mentioned, Oh, I've had, I had these before they were a thing, which is cool. Cause apparently now we're a thing. Our brand is a thing. I didn't know that, but it's good to know that, but that that's my point right now. If you're wanting to get direct sales, you're wanting to drive sales and you're like, I only want to work with influencers that drive sales. Then you're going to have to go with bigger people. You're going to have to be willing to pay and you're going to have to look for a different type of influencer. Oftentimes there's other influencers that are like deal finds or deal hauls. They'll do them. And those are really big on TikTok. And with that, it's, you're going to have to do a promotion, uh, you know, for the deal haul to work. So you're going to be say like 40, 50% off on your products um, and then generally speaking, you're going to pay the influencer anywhere from 500 to $5,000 for their post. And then you're generally also going to be giving commission on the post on, on that promotion as well. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Those are good because they drive sales really quickly, but it's not good for that long-term you're getting content all the time sort of approach. Um, we get that more from the nano influencers and how we structure it. And we have like, you know, we gamify the promotion of our brand with them where they can earn points and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. That sounds amazing. So um, you were mentioning something that we are going, let's go back to the previous point on reaching out to influencers and saying, hi, this is who we are and we want to offer value. Right. Mm-hmm. And you are mentioning, okay, this is the amount of products that you're receiving from us for free. Like let's say a hundred dollars mm-hmm. there. Obviously it can go everything right. And also it can go everything wrong. So right. what would be the right amount of like the products that you offer or how would you approach that? Yeah. So we had tested out in our business and then also in a, in a handful of our partners at, at the chat agency Um, so all of our clients, we consider them partners because we partner with them in their businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we tested out in the past requiring people to pay a little bit for the product upfront that, that just doesn't, the reason why we, why we started doing that was, was we didn't want the influencer or the person to just take the product and run, like Mm -hmm. just not do anything. Right. Um, in our experience, in the past where we just give something away for free about 50% of the people never followed through and did anything. Mm -hmm. So in between 50 and 40 and 50%, it was decently, it was high enough that we were like, we're going to test having people pay first. Um, But when we, when we started asking people to pay, we would get maybe 10% of the people that would, that would originally say yes to doing some sort of brand ambassador partnership or something actually then follow through, sign a contract and then receive something. So we're getting far less when we were requiring people to pay. And the reason for this is that just think about it from their perspective again, right? You're reaching out to them. You're saying, Hey, we want to work with you. They're, they get all excited. So that means when, you know, when somebody comes to you and say, Hey, we want to work with you. Generally that means pay. They're going to, we want to pay you or give you something, mm-hmm. but if then they come back and say, and we only need you to buy this and it's only going to cost this much money. Well, that's just a hard no for most people. And this is again, coming directly from my influencer panel. Um, last week I had people all the way up. Like, I think it was like 500,000 followers was the most. We had celebrity influencers all the way down to nano influencers in, in this panel. And every single one of them said, yeah, that's becoming more common. And they all are just a hard no. So the, the dollar amount that you're going to offer really depends on the, how much the, how many, how many followers the, that particular influencer has and how good you are at talking, (laughs) how good you are like building that relationship. Really. Um, Most of the time you can do with nano influencers, just a free product, Mm -hmm. but you know, my products range, our costs are anywhere from, three to twelve dollars a piece our cost so that's not a ton for us i have friends that their their hard costs are 50 to 150 dollars so that's a different conversation right because mm-hmm. if it's a 150 dollar thing that there were 50 dollar thing for their costs and that means retail is probably 300 400 maybe i don't know mm-hmm. so that's a better value proposition right there so um my point is that when you start doing this, you're going to have to look at it as an, as an investment and it's think of it in terms of like, again, value, like earn media value, right? If you can get 10 posts from a nano influencer, that's worth a thousand bucks basically. So that's a really, that's a really good value. Um, if you can get 10 posts from a micro influencer, that's worth $10,000. You know, it's, it, you got, you got to think of it that way. And so if your product costs you five bucks and you know that, you know, giving it away to people, 50% of them might not do anything, then you're going to need to understand that like in order to earn that $5 back, all you need is one post. That's it. Cause, and then you've made, you made quote unquote, your investment back in terms of earned media value. The other way that you could look at it is in terms of getting um, access to user generated content as like a lifestyle photo shoot. If you were to plan a lifestyle photo shoot, a cheap one is like 250 bucks, maybe 500 bucks for a cheap 
inexpensive lifestyle photo shoot. And you're probably going to get 20 photos, maybe 50. Um, so that, that's the way that I look at it in terms of like cost and whatnot. So I know that didn't really answer your question. How much should you spend per, per person? I look at it more of, um, yeah, like what's, what's my the return, ROI? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Okay. You were mentioning about contracts. Do you like have any yes. type of contracts? <clears throat> and that's, that is important too. And this is where, I mean, this is one, one of the bigger values of like working with like an agency like ours, where we, we have all that done for people. Um, if you decide to do this on your own, then you're definitely going to want to go to a lawyer and draw up a contract to give to the influencers because the way that copyright laws work in America is the creative license is issued or it's, it's owned by the person who creates the creative work, right? So you take a photo, the copyright to that photo is quote unquote yours. Now you would have to register it. If you want it to legally enforce anything, you need to register it with the USPTO, but um, the, the rights, you're still the rights owner. What we do in our contracts is, and now this is a really big one. And this is one reason why, again, I like working with nano influencers instead of mega influencers is because we can get not like, um, you know, all rights to the photo in perpetuity, which means forever, um, you know, we get, we get that in our contract. Now, depending on the influencer, how, how big, you know, how big they are, um, oftentimes if you, so if you don't have a contract, what could happen is you could work with somebody and they'll be, they'll come back to you and they'll say, you know, you try to reuse that photo somewhere else. If you don't have a contract in place, they could come back and sue you mm -hmm. and say, that's not your photo. That's my photo. I never gave you permission to use that on Amazon, or I never gave you permission to use it on your website or in your marketing materials. So going into whatever it is that you're going to do, you you need to make sure that you think through the legal rights to the creative work, who owns those and do they transfer to you? And so that's what we have in our contracts is that we own the rights in perpetuity, that they release rights to us forever so that we can then use them on our website so that we can use them, use them on Amazon, on our listings, on Amazon posts, et cetera. And that has, yeah, that's, yeah, you need to do that. Um, because I've, I've heard too many horror stories of people getting sued or, you know, using something and then it, it, you know, they have to take it down because the rights owner comes and says, you can't do this because, you know, technically if you don't have rights to it and you're using it on your listing, they're the rights owner. They could go to Amazon and Amazon could take your listing down for a copyright infringement. It happens all the time. Yeah, definitely. You just brought up really good two points. First off, the contracts, how they're off are the people when do you offer them contracts? And the second one, what does working with your agency looks like? Yeah. So where we see a lot of fall off, like I said, is when we were experimenting with, well, not experimenting, it was just, it worked a few years ago and it's just not working now, not as well as it used to, um, where we were asking people to like search, find, buy, and then we rebate them. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just that concept of, we want to work with you. We're going to, and they, and in their heads are like, that means I'm getting paid or something free. And then you switch it and you say, you need to pay for us. That's kind of insulting. Right. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we've had brand reps that were like really insulted. <laughs> Pardon me. When people have asked them to pay or something. So um, the, the points of fall off were when they um, were asked to pay for something. The other one was when asked to sign the contract. Sometimes people get a little bit hesitant to sign the contract and that's fine. And then we can go through it with them and explain, um, you know, why we have certain things. And depending on, again, like the level of the influencer, say if I'm working with a celebrity, you know, the contract's going to be different because actually they, generally speaking, have a lawyer team or, or at least one lawyer and then an agent or a manager or something. Depending on the celebrity, you have like a team of lawyers and then a team of managers and they're a real pain in the ass. But they're very careful about like rights and when you can use things and how you can use things and for how long and that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. it's going to be different for celebrities. So um, my advice for that is just write in what you want in like your perfect world contract and then just go to your, your own legal counsel. You can just do it to any, any real lawyer like that does business 
business documents can draw up a contract for you. Now, working with our agency, what we do that's unique is, well, you know, we've used this system in our business for the past five years. And I mean, we don't have like the biggest following in the world. We have like, I think 11 or 13,000 on um, Facebook. And then I think 13,000 or something on Instagram. Um, Our reach is in the hundreds of thousands though. So I don't really necessarily care about the following. I care more about the reach, like how, how many people are we reaching? So I can just look at this now. We have, sorry, I was wrong. Um, 41,000 reach on Instagram, 19,000 reach, sorry, 19,000 reach on Instagram, 41,000 on Facebook is our reach. And our audience is 11,000 on Facebook and 14,000 on Instagram. Um, Coming back to you guys working with our agency. What is that like? Generally speaking, what we do is we will, not everyone's a fit first and foremost. I'm just going to say that if you're just getting started and you're trying to rub your, rub your pennies together, hoping they have babies, we're definitely not a fit. Um, this is something that people can do themselves. Right now we're in between two and $5,000 a month for people that want to work with us. Mm-hmm. So the majority of the people that are good fits for us are if, if they're starting a brand, they have past brand experience. So if they're at the start and they, they've built successful brands and probably exited them before, most of the time it's at least seven figures or so, or so in terms of sales volume and, and whatnot, because um, oftentimes people will hire us when they're wanting to build stuff up, build up audiences before an exit, because this is one of the most this is one of the greatest ways to increase your valuation of your company, build a great following of rabid people that love you. I mean, that increases your multiple and it's really cost effective. Um, You know, so spending $2,000 a month, $5,000 a month in marketing translates to another, you know, X percentage, it, it pays for itself. So when we, when we typically work with people, we'll have a uh, initial call, kind of feel out, okay, maybe is this a good fit? Go through the program. Then we do a, an audit of their account first and foremost before we then take the next step. We charge $500 for the audit. And in the audit, what we're, do, what we're looking at is their social media following, their website, their branding, their packaging, their, their Amazon listings. Um, their competitors' listings, their competitive, their competitors' websites, their competitors' social media followings, and getting a really good lay of the land of like, you know, what what do we think we can do for them? Mm-hmm. You know, if it's just a straight me too product that there is no uniqueness in, you don't have a brand story, and your only story is, well, I'm selling on Amazon because I want to make a bunch of money, you won't be a good fit for us. It's a good um, story though. It's not not good for Paul. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, it's not good. It's not good for social media because yeah, yeah, definitely. people are selfish on social media and social media, people want to support things that make them look good. Yeah. Right. And so mm-hmm. what makes them look good is partnering with a company that, you know, has some sort of give back initiative or really, really unique, or they're like, I was the first one in my friend's group that find this cool thing. Right. So the more unique your product is, um, the more, it, the, the more you have as a brand owner, like this, this goal to build a real brand with a real following that, that would be another, you know, sign that you might be a good fit. Um, let's say, you know, we do the audit, the $500 audit comes back. Hey, you know, your packaging is terrible. Your website is really bad. And I think that you need to improve your packaging and your, your brand experience before working with us. That could be one option. We, we say, Hey, here's this list, this laundry list of things that you need to do first right? Because why pay us, you know, four grand a month to send, you know, to work with influencers when no influencer would want to work with you because your packaging looked like it was designed by a a clown tripping acid or something. (laughs) Like we've, we've had that happen before. There was a guy, they had amazing listings. Their products were great. Their packaging looked like it was a mishmash between a casino floor and in a clown studio, it was so bad. It was so, so bad. And I was like, guys, like you give this to an influencer and they're going to be embarrassed to look at it. They're like, not just, not just take a photo. Like it's embarrassing to hold. Like it's really think. bad. So anyway. love your honesty. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. It's like, are you trying to make money? Or you're trying to feel good. Yeah. Because if you're trying to, if you're trying to make money, 
you should be, you should have a thick skin. And when somebody says, man, your packaging looks like dog shit. Like you should be like, hmm. So when you said dog shit, what exactly did you mean? The color, the consistency. <laughs> yeah. So why is it? Why is it? And and then you need to have a thick skin because if people, if 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 it looks bad, yeah. and people don't buy it, you're losing money. This you're not in business to feel good about yourself. <laughs> you're in business to make money. So uh, be honest. Most of the but be respectful of your time and. I just noticed that I, I love that you are so passionate about the subject I'm talking about. I just noticed that in 12 minutes I have with Norm the ne- next podcast and I just <laughs> <laughs> being super upfront here uh, yeah. and being super respectful of your time. Before we wrap up, a uh, few questions that I'd love to ask my guests. First off, uh, what's $50 or less investment that you recently made to up your nano influencer game? Ooh, nano influencer game? Yep. Um, well, I'm, I'm a book nerd. I bought, um, where is it? This is a super nerdy book. I bought a book. It's called On Rhetoric by Aristotle. Uh, tra- this is the translation by George Kennedy. And um, basically it's upping my game with speaking and uh, yeah, just communicating because uh, rhetoric or back in the ancient Greek days, a rhetor was somebody who spoke in front of people and they basically made a whole art of the science behind speaking and um, ethos, pathos, logos, like these ideas of how you can connect better with people. So I think this book was technically it's a college, I think it's a college textbook. So it was like 40 or 50 bucks for the paperback, but I don't know. That was it. That's great. The, the book. I love books. That's good. And that brings me to my second question. Three of your top favorite books and why do you love them? <laughs> yeah. Um, I have been geeking out recently with anything Dan Ariely has written. Um, he is a behavioral economist. I think he, I think it's Brown that he's at. I can't, I always get the wrong university. Um, brilliant. And his books talk a lot about, uh, so his um, main book that most people know is called Predictably Irrational. And uh, the whole book is about how the science behind and the, and the psychology behind why people make decisions. Mm-hmm. And in a nutshell, everyone makes irrational decisions. We all do all the time, but we rationalize them internally. And so it's kind of a marketing book on like how you can sort of get into people's heads and figure out what, you know, how to help them make decisions, you know, one way or another. Um, so I love that book. Um, the, my other books though are novels. I'm in the middle of one right now called Fall or Dodge in Hell which is amazing. It's by, it's by Neil Stevenson. It's super long and it's super nerdy. So if any of my uh, nerdy book friends out there want to read it, I know Carlos is a huge book nerd. Um, I love that. I'm um, that. And then anything written by Brandon Sanderson, the guy is a freaking genius. So I have to mix up my, uh, my novels and my smart, my brain, my brain feed books. Cause <laughs> I, I think that <laughs> that's like the ideal like ratio. Okay. A bit yeah. of science, a bit of <laughs> yeah, novels. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how can people get a hold of you? Say hi, uh, learn more about your services and basically. Yeah. So, you, I you. mean, um, I will be speaking at Prosper. So if you're going to be at Prosper, um, I'm speaking on Thursday in the afternoon, I think like one or two, I can't remember. Um, so come and hang out with me at Prosper. Uh, you can find me on Clubhouse, just Paul Barron um, on Clubhouse and my website, The Chat Agency, like we're chatting, thechatagency.com. Sounds amazing. Awesome. So this is also the the Clubhouse sessions that you were mentioning Yep. with the influencers? Yeah, those are recorded. Yeah, the, thanks for bringing that up. Those are recorded on amzama.club and it's okay. just Amazon Ask Me Anything. I started a room back in January and ran it, it was every week for about 12 weeks, just asking when you don't any, any question for Amazon sellers. So um, you can sign up for free, listen to all the past recordings. And it's, a, um, I use a, I use a searchable feature too, that allows you to search through the recording. So if you're interested in like product launching or influencers, for example, you just type it in and then it'll go to any spot on the recording um, where it mentions those. And like I said, uh, for the month of June, I, I had a panel on the second with brand owners that work with influencers. 
the 16th with influencers that work with brand owners. And then I'll have another one on the 30th that will be a conversation between the brand owners and the influencers all talking together. Because this is one of those subjects that people get, it's for some reason, there's a lot of like mysticism. They don't understand how it works. And so I figured this is a great way to get people to talk and be open and demystify it for people. I love it. Sign me up for it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. This is why I also like wanted to have you on the show because so many people are just throwing out these big words like influencer and whatever, but they don't understand how to approach for stuff and how to make it like really how to structure it so well that it's oh, yeah. working for them. And oh, and there's and there's people now that have started services that literally like there's a guy that started a service doing influencer marketing that he had me speak at an event in the fall that he did. He doesn't know the first thing about influencer marketing. And he started an agency doing influencer marketing after I did a talk for him. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well. Today's so, honesty day. <laughs> well, it's, it's, fun. it's, it's funny because like you have people like him that, you know, literally know jack shit about influencer marketing, but yeah. they see an opportunity and then they're going to be like, well, I'll take your money. And so th- this is where, uh, honestly, like my, my thing for people, if, if I could leave them with one thing is it, it's not that hard. It's just time consuming. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's most of the time people, um, that's why people pay us because they just don't want to do that themselves. They'd rather have professionals do it. And um, yeah. You are amazing. That's, that's, thank that's you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that we will bring you on the second time also for the show. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe we can also like make a, an agency and implement an agency. Well, <laughs> I, well, I told, I told Carlos, I was in Miami a month ago. I said, I'll fly down and hang out and we'll do another in-person thing. It was so much fun. That would be amazing. Most definitely. Paul, you're brilliant. You're awesome. Thank you so, so much for all this knowledge. And thank you. Thank you for everyone who's listened to this amazing man. Uh, be sure to follow him on all the social media platforms and also to check out the websites that I'm going to provide in the show notes. Show notes. There you go. <laughs> Much love. Bye-bye. It was fun sharing this episode with you. If you found value in what you've heard, please show your love with a subscribe rate and review of the show. Until next time.